Oh, beautiful, far heroes proved in liberating strife. As this day was getting closer, I plan of speaking about my father, who served during the Vietnam War and retired from the Air Force with 21 and a half years of dedicated service to this country. A man with many faults I have inherited, yet a man who believes in this country with all his heart and all his mind. A man who believes in this country's fundamental foundation of freedom, to which I concur. Tonight my topic is not focused on any one person, place, or thing, but of one word, an idea to some, a utopia or dream of many great people throughout history who have died and lived for this one word, freedom. The notion of freedom began in this country from the shores of Plymouth Rock to the cotton fields of South Carolina. I ask you tonight, what does freedom mean to you? Webster's Dictionary defines freedom as the state of being free, liberty, independence. Words that should be familiar to all of us. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. For many years I grew up like many of you singing those words, let freedom ring. What exactly does freedom mean to you? I have to be honest with you. That song, along with the Star Spangled Banner, didn't mean much coming from a fifth grader, let alone into my adult years. For this, I am ashamed. For my mother, an immigrant from Thailand, you would have thought while scrubbing dirty, dirty toilets in a hotel for 15 years, she would have complained about this country. Yet she worked every day with a smile on her face, knowing that somewhere in the world, someone else was worse off. While taking care of three children, working a 50-hour week, and learning to read and write a foreign language on her own, nearly 25 years later, she stood in a federal courthouse and held her hand up high in taking an oath to finally be an American citizen. To her, freedom is more than a word. It's a privilege, a lesson many sport Americans have failed. I, like many of you, have taken for granted a lot of what most people in the world harbor as a precious commodity. The word freedom is something we cannot see, taste, or touch, yet so many have died for its meaning so that others could feel it or escape to its embracing arms. To begin, I'd like to read you again the passage of that childhood song. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Martin Luther King Jr. said, And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. The Constitution says that all men are created equal and are guaranteed unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These words are, are, are have what made us a great nation today. My fear is that we are forgetting. We have forgotten that this is not a guarantee. It is only a promise which can be broken when we least expect it. So many great people have lived and died for freedom and its idea. We need to dedicate our lives as Americans to this so that those who have sacrificed like Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, and every American soldier shall not have died in vain. We cannot allow it. We should not allow it. It is our duty as Americans to not forget it. It is our duty as human beings. What exactly does freedom mean to you? Have you asked yourself lately? 
I'm guessing that for our young military men and women fighting and dying overseas right now, they have a pretty good idea of what it means to them. For them, it means that we get to sleep safe tonight without the fear of invasion. We get to send our kids to school without the fear of a roadside bomb. While they huddle together tonight in a foxhole to keep warm and pray to God they leave, live to see the next day, we enjoy our ice cream and keep complaining about having to work a 40-hour week. Ronald Reagan once said, We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war, and in doing so, lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening. Well, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the Founding Fathers. This statement was made nearly 40 years ago. Funny how it almost fits today. With that said, I, like many of you, have taken for granted a lot of what most people in the world harbor as precious. The words written in the Constitution are words that have made us the greatest nation on this planet. We must, we must remember that this thing we hold dear is not the paper that it's written on, but the words that define it. The idea that started as a dream of a few that has manifested into a dream of many. My fear is that we have forgotten that this is not a guarantee. It is only a promise, a promise we have made to each other. A government for the people, by the people, not a government that rules the people. This thing we call freedom, to some may be idle words. A word found only in a dictionary or in a speech like this one. A word that is abused for self-promotion without representation in order to get a vote. This is not the politician's fault, it's our fault. It's our fault for not questioning them when they choose to vote for new laws that restrict our freedoms in the name of public safety. To use our very own fears and ignorance against us. Laws that contradict our very own constitution. It's our fault for voting for them because they dress better than the other candidate, raise more money or have a better TV commercial than the other. It's our fault for complaining at the kitchen table and then after our stomachs are full, we walk away and pretend that it will work itself out. A broken vehicle cannot fix itself. We are the mechanics of this vehicle. We ride called America and most of us expect a free ride without chipping in for gas money. If one of our friends acted like that, we'd kick him out to the curb. We reap what we sow and today our crops are starving. Our children are starving for a sense of belonging to something greater than themselves. It's our fault for forgetting our past and our heroes who gave their lives for the very freedoms we take for granted today. It's our fault when we choose to roll over on our fat bellies after grazing all day at the all-you-can-eat public trough buffet while the rest of the world starves to death. What can I get free today is what I hear from society. You want a hand out instead of a hand up as if you've earned something because you're in America. Well, there's a difference from being in America and being an American. President John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Ask yourselves, what have you done to better this country lately besides bleed it dry to bankruptcy? The word freedom is something we cannot see, taste, or touch, yet so many have died for its meaning so that others like us could feel or escape to its embracing arms. We are gathered here today because of this right, the right to freedom of speech, freedom to choose where we want to go to school, freedom to choose what clothes we want to wear, the basic freedom of choice. And that is why I dedicate tonight to freedom, a thing we cannot see or physically touch but most yearn to feel, an idea so fragile if we are not careful, if we don't educate ourselves and have the courage to defend it, we risk to lose it. And in conclusion, there is no better time than today. I believe in this country and the grass-rooted ideals it was created for, and I am hopeful we will steer this vehicle in the right direction, so long as every American pick up a wrench and act as its mechanic to lend a helping hand. 
we cannot keep giving free rides to the freeloaders. The weight is too much to bear for the few. If you choose to come to America, we expect you to become American. Love the land you call home and be prepared to defend it. Believe in the American dream. Work for the betterment of America and be proud to be American. Freedom is not free. It's a privilege that must be earned or we risk losing ourselves as Americans. I, like Martin Luther King Jr., also have a dream. That one day all Americans can refer to each other as Americans only and not add a disclaimer at the beginning of the word. That African Americans, Asian Americans, Latino Americans will think of themselves and be seen only as Americans. I have a dream that we will all work together for the common good of this country and not blame each other for the other's mistakes. And when that day comes, we will believe the words in our hearts when we say, I am proud to be an American. I ask you tonight, what does freedom mean to you? Thank you. Oh, beautiful, far heroes prove.